Hello everyone, I've got another video for y'all. I got this buffet from my neighbor a while back. It's pretty dirty on the inside, so that'll need to be cleaned up. I think this might be pancake syrup. The top is warped, so I don't want to use it for this project. To take it off, I remove the brackets on the back side, and then use my dolly and this wooden stand to lean it back on so I could get it out of my way. Then I used my dolly so I could carefully move the buffet without damaging anything. With everything situated, I can finally get to work on this piece. The first thing I do is take off all of the hardware including the hinges on the doors. This hardware is really dirty and will need to be cleaned. I also plan on painting it a different color, so it all needs to come off. It's a good idea to keep all of your hardware in a plastic bag or a plastic tub so you don't have to go looking for it later. Next, I knocked the dust off the top and sprayed it down with some super clean and then wiped it immediately off with my rag. Cleaning furniture before you paint is the most important step because if all of this grime is on the body of the furniture when you go to paint it, it's going to interfere with your paint's finish, which can cause it to peel or have durability issues. If you don't have any specialty cleaning chemicals to clean your projects, you can add a little bit of Dawn dish soap to warm water and it'll work just as good. The pancake syrup wasn't going to come off with just a rag, so I used a scraper to get it off, then sprayed some more super clean on it and scrubbed it the best I could. There's still a little stain there, but this is going to get sealed anyways, so it's good enough for now. The insides of drawers are also typically really dusty, so it's a good idea to vacuum these out and then wipe them down with a damp rag so you can get any leftover dust that the vacuum didn't pick up. I originally planned to stain the top of this piece, but after I sanded it down, I noticed that there was a lot of discoloration in different parts of the top, and while I could have used wood bleach or some other technique to remedy this, I really didn't feel up to the task, so I decided I was just going to paint this whole thing. For now, I continued sanding around the rest of the top, so at least the work was done for the next person that refinishes this after me. Once I got the top done, I used my 3x5 detail sander to scuff sand the rest of the body so that my paint would have a better surface to adhere to. Sanding before you paint isn't always necessary, especially paints that market themselves as no sand paints, but I prefer to play it safe. This also gives you a chance to get a little bit more intimate with your furniture and notice any small imperfections that you might not have noticed before. When I was sanding the leg of this piece, the vibration actually loosened up this leg, revealing to me that there was some damage that I needed to take care of. This may have been overlooked if I skipped the sanding step, and while it is going to create more work now, at least it isn't going to fall apart whenever the customer has it later on. This is actually a relatively easy repair. All it needs is to be taken apart, add a little wood glue, clamp it, and give it a little bit of time to dry. Once I got the dresser on its side, I noticed there was a ton of spider webs and spider egg sacs, a few live spiders. This must have been the source of all the spiders we were having in our house this summer. Don't forget to clean the bottom and insides of furniture before bringing it in your home so you don't have to worry about this, especially if you're afraid of bugs. With the spider nightmare taken care of, I can finally focus on repairing this leg. The only thing holding it together was this furniture glide which I popped off using a screwdriver. These two pieces of wood were joined together with this metal bracket, so all I really needed to do was reinsert this. I cleaned it off using the screwdriver, then I applied wood glue to all of the surfaces, put it back together, clamped it down, cleaned it up, and then gave it a few hours to dry. There was still a small gap in the joint right here, so I applied some wood glue so it wouldn't stand out later whenever I paint it. Whenever I'm working with wood glue, I keep a damp rag nearby so I can do some quick easy cleanups and not have to worry about trying to sand it off later after it's dried. This rear leg was also loose, but all it needed was a single screw and it was good to go.
After the wood glue had dried, I applied a little bit of wood filler to hide any imperfections and then sanded it down with my detail sander. This piece also had these round buttons or dowel ends on the front that kind of looked dated to me, so I took those off, wood filled them, and sanded them smooth. With the majority of my prep work and repairs complete, I can finally wipe this piece down one more time and get it ready to be painted. I like to use a brush and a dry rag to kind of dust everything off first and then come back with a damp rag to get any leftover dust. I feel like if you have a damp rag and you're mopping up a lot of dirt, you run the risk of smearing it around, so I prefer to do it this way. Before I started painting this piece, I sealed it with a few coats of aerosol lacquer. I really like this Minwax spray can because the spray comes out in a fan pattern rather than a round pattern. This helps me get more even coverage whenever I'm applying this lacquer, which is very important because I'm using it to seal in the oils and tannins in the wood. So whenever I go to paint it later, I don't get discoloration or wood bleeds in my paint finish. I also wanted to seal the top because I didn't want to paint directly over the wood. Perhaps in the future someone might strip this piece down and this will save them a lot of work not having to sand the paint out of the wood grain. To apply the paint for this project I'm going to be using this Purdy XL Glide Synthetic Brush. For the paint I'm going to be using Valspar Signature in a satin finish. This color is called Mystique. I'll be dry brushing this piece so I only want to get a little bit of paint on the tip of my brush and then wipe most of that off before applying long light strokes on the surface of the furniture. I'm not trying to get full coverage with this technique because I'm going to be layering several different colors of paint to get a sort of rustic farmhouse looking effect. My original plans were to dry brush this piece white but the orange tone of the wood wasn't going to work well. So instead, I'm gonna be using brown and gray along with the white to be able to hide that and kind of make it look like this white is painted over a darker wood. With this brown and gray layer, I'm trying to fill in the gaps between the white so that it covers up the orange tone of the wood from before. For these long, light strokes, I'll keep the brush vertical, but if I wanna get some darker markings, I'll turn the brush horizontal so that I can better fill in the areas and create a little bit more texture. One big advantage to dry brushing is that you're applying such thin coats that there's pretty much zero dry time, so you don't have to wait for anything and you can just keep working and knock out a project really quick. The first gray that I used was kind of more of a green gray, but I wanted the gray to contrast the brown more, so I grabbed this Valspar sample of almost charcoal that I had laying around and used it instead. This worked out well because it covered a lot better than I had expected and blended in with the brown. It kind of simulated a wood look that I wanted to be underneath the white dry brush. At this point, all I needed to do was continue layering the colors one by one until I get the look that I want. Again, there's no wrong way to do this. If you mess up, you can keep layering over it until you get the look you like. This is one of those techniques where you have to just jump in and do it. So don't be afraid to grab a brush and try it yourself. This is the final look that I ended up being happy with. Now all I need to do is replicate the same finish on the body and the drawers of this piece to make sure that everything looks perfect. Apparently I missed a bit of old finish on the side of this dresser so I sanded it down real quick, lacquered it to seal it in, and then continue working. After getting the majority of the work done, I was working on the doors and on the home stretch of finishing this dresser up, but I set them up to match it up to the drawers. They fell down and pretty much just exploded. 
This really took the wind out of my sails and I decided I wasn't going to try to repair them. Instead, I would fill the holes for the hinges. This thing is just going to have an open face for people to put whatever they want there. I'm over it. I applied wood filler to the holes and while letting it dry, I started to work on the hardware. The hardware on this piece, like everything else, was really dirty so I gave it a good scrubbing with some water, dried them off, and then gave them a little time to dry before coming back to paint them with this Rust-Oleum Oil Rubbed Bronze Spray Paint. I do this by applying three thin coats rather than trying to get it all done in one go. By the time I was done working on the hardware, the wood filler had dried, so I got it sanded all smooth and then touched it up with the same dry brushing technique that I used on the rest of the dresser. Now that all of the painting is out of the way, I can finally top coat this piece. I'm using the same Minwax aerosol lacquer as before, except this time it's in a semi-gloss to give this piece just a little bit of a sheen. When I'm top coating with aerosol lacquer, I'll apply about three thin coats. Then I'll come back with 320 grit sandpaper to knock it down and get it smooth. Then I'll come back with the fourth final coat where I'll move my hand slower and hold the can closer to the surface, giving me a very smooth finish. After giving the top coat some time to dry, I could finally install the hardware that I had refinished earlier, and this project is done. This project threw a couple surprises at me, but overall, I'm happy with the finish and the way it turned out. Not too happy about the doors, but I was over it at that point. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something today. I hope this video gives you the confidence to do your own piece sometime. If you enjoyed this video, please like, leave a comment down below. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see y'all again soon.